This is Shirin Nashat. She's an Iranian visual artist who lives in New York City and was born in 1957. She's known primarily for her work in film, video, and photography. Her artworks focus on the contrast of a variety of distinctions like Islam in the West, femininity and masculinity, or public life and private life. Nesha has had many accomplishments, such as being recognized countless times for her work, from winning awards as the director to being named Artist of the Decade by the Huffington Post. Nesha is the fourth born of five children. Being part of a wealthy family, she was brought up in the religious town of Kazvin in northwestern Iran, under a very warm, supportive Muslim family environment, where she learned traditional religious values through her grandparents. Nesha's father was a physician, and her mother, a homemaker. Nesha said that her father fantasized about the West, romanticized the West, and slowly rejected all of his own values. Both her parents did. What happened, I think, was that their identity slowly dissolved. They exchanged it for comfort and served their class. Nesha's father encouraged each of his daughters to be an individual, to take risks, to learn, to see the world. And he sent his daughters as well as his sons to college to receive their highest education. Sharon Nesat currently resides in New York City. Her education and her family were both great inspirations for her artworks, especially the photograph series that played a big part in getting her well known, as well as her personal experiences living a life as an Islamic woman in the time of the Islamic Revolution. At the time, Iran had been ruled by the Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, who took power in 1941 during the Second World War and reigned as king until 1979, when the Persian monarchy was overthrown by revolutionaries. His dictatorship was known for the violent repression of political and religious freedom, but also for his modernization of the country along Western cultural models. Post-war Iran was an ally of Britain and the United States and was markedly progressive with regards to women's rights. The Shah's regime, however, steadily grew more restrictive and revolutionaries eventually rose to abolish the monarchy in favor of a conservative religious government headed by Ayatollah Khomeini. Despite the align with the Shah's expansion of women's rights, her father still prioritized his daughter's access to education, and the young artist attended a Catholic school where she learned about both Western and Iranian intellectual and cultural history. She left, however, in the mid-1970s, pursuing her studies in California as the environment in Iran grew increasingly hostile. It would be 17 years before she returned to her homeland, when she did, she confronted a society that was completely opposed to the one that she had grown up in. Still, she continued to be influenced as a cultural artist. Every photograph shown that has Persian calligraphy, which I'll explain shortly, is part of the series Women of Allah. The text is usually on the person's face, but can be presented anywhere on the body. As stated before, one of her most famous artwork series is Women of Allah, where Shirin Nashat uses herself as a portrayal of women in Iran who went through a, a traditional suppression. This theme can be seen displayed throughout all the images and photographs of the entire series. The subject, whether it is herself or another woman, can be seen wearing a veil in a lot of the photographs. The veils are intended to protect women's bodies from becoming the sexualized object of the male gaze, but it also protects women from being seen at all. The gaze in this context becomes a signifier of sexuality, sin, shame, and power. Nesha is a fan of feminist theories that explain how the male gaze is normalized in visual and popular culture. Women's bodies are commonly paraded as objects of desire in advertising and film available to be looked at without consequence. Many feminist artists have used the action of gazing back as a means to free the female body from this objectification. The gaze here might also reflect exotic fantasies of the East. In 
in Orientalist paintings of the 18th and 19th centuries, Eastern women are often depicted nude, surrounded by richly colored and patterned textiles and decorations. Women are grouped with other beautiful objects that can be possessed. In Nashat's images, women return the gaze, breaking free from centuries of surveillance to male or European desire. When explaining her series, Women of Allah, Shirin Nashat uses speeches as a main contributor to the overall concept and reasoning for the artworks. It also played a big influence with her transition from video and film to making photography. In Speechless, it is a picture of Shirin Nashat herself, with her eyes open. It is in black and white, and she is facing at the viewer, sort of glazing at them. She is wearing a black shador with a sad expression on her face. There is text all over her face. Last but not least, there is a metallic gun touching the right side of her cheek, which is also in black and white, and pointing towards the viewer. The text seen across most of the photographs is identified to be Persian calligraphy. This is a type of calligraphy created when the Persians adapted the Arabic alphabet. This form of art is one of the most reputable and famous arts in Iran. The importance of calligraphy among Iranian artists is such that some arts seem to be imperfect without the directive calligraphy. Iranians more than any other nation have used various calligraphy to enrich and beautify several things such as earthenware, metallic vessels, historic buildings, and in Nashat's case, even people. Like Speechless, the images deliver a huge impact on the viewer, the asymmetrical organization and achromatic color scheme. The shading and modeling help achieve that effect, along with the rhythm and the repetition of the text on her face. The images also give a solemn and almost desperate look on the woman's face, but the tears brimming at her eyes give a look of strength, along with a cry for help. Species and the rest of the images makes the symbol of a woman in mourning more powerful by having opposites of each emotion in each photograph, freedom and oppression, strength and weakness, determination and submission, hope and despair. Sharon Nashat's focus of a woman in mourning is different from all the other works of art because it has an emphasis on women's rights, which artworks do not regularly have. She uses herself and other Islamic women to show the struggles and reality that they are faced with because of their gender and because they live in Iran. Speeches also cast a feeling of power and awe. Her facial expressions can display a desire for the freedom to express herself. Along with that, the picture is purposely zoomed in to her face in black and white to give an overall emotional impact. They represent and symbolize the emotional hope that Islamic women strive to achieve and the reality of their life trying to stop them from achieving it. As for my artwork, I was having a little trouble with what I wanted to create. My original idea was just to take a picture of someone looking emotional and turn it into black and white. However, after researching the Persian calligraphy text, I decided that I would like to create a phrase using that alphabet. The text shown is a translation from the phrase, Así es la vida, which means, that is life, or that's life, in Spanish. It has some meaning to me because my grandpa, who unfortunately passed away, would always say it, like every day, and it stuck to me, especially after he passed. This is my kind of go-to explanation when anything bad or unfortunate happens to me and just a way to shrug it off because you could always just tell yourself, huh, that's life, and life goes on. <laughs>